Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do sort of rapid, quick reviews on two baller knives for you, okay? So let's start with the Slappy right here. This is my laid-back jack, and I actually have two of these. Um, the other one is in the case. I guess I can grab it real quick. I don't want to get into a whole thing about Jack Wolf knives because you guys know I love them. Um, here it is right there as the air conditioner kicks on sorry about that so this is the jack wolf knives laid back jack right um you guys have seen me unbox it like twice now because i unboxed that one and i unboxed that one originally um you've seen me show the slips for my jack wolf knives a million times because i truly love troy's work i can't speak highly enough of him and um yeah so this one is the green canvas micarta this one was sent to me by jack wolf knives ben belkin over there to review for the channel and help him advertise the drop which is a smart move you have this beautiful belt satin on here it's just got these custom hand finishes and that's what makes these so special right yes they're expensive this is 275 for green canvas micarta titanium uh integral bolsters they call it and uh, M390 blade, you got your nail neck there. Here's the spine of the blade. You'll see that all of these, when they're open at half or closed, that spring is completely flush. This one is the laid back pickleback jack because it is the fat carbon and green. Again, spring flush, half flush, closed flush, um yeah they're just built supremely well and that's just one of the reasons i love jack wolf knives i also love jack wolf knives because i love ben belkin he's the owner operator of jack wolf knives and he's just a fantastic human being so um i am enjoying collecting each model as they come out i think i'll have at least two of each if i can i have these two and then i have two of the sharpshooter jacks i have this one in the blue fat carbon with the blue slip there and then i also have this one in the natural micarta and the um of course northwoods leatherwork slip i just love their slips but um i did have a third sharpshooter i sold it because i just don't need three of them um do i use these knives yes i actually use these knives probably have used these more than any other knives um because they are so useful and i think part of it is i recently have gotten into like fidget toys you guys know been getting into this stuff and that kind of keeps me it keeps my hands busy with the fidget stuff right so i don't need to have two three whatever many knives on me that i can fidget with uh, because that's really what i was doing with knives right now i still like to pick a knife up that i have in pocket flick it and right i'm not like a different person but it's made it to where i can carry a slip joint like this and not care like I don't worry about oh it's just it's a slip joint right and everybody's issue with slip joints is it's not a locking knife right or uh it's not fidgety it doesn't have a clip like whatever right well that doesn't matter to me because i don't need it to quick deploy right um i don't need it to lock because i do edc tests i don't do crazy use with them right like i open packages i cut shipping labels um those are the two things i do the most i've cut cardboard with these i actually posted on instagram with it and this thing goes through cardboard like it's paper i mean it's really crazy because it has a full hollow grind up to the spine it's one of the trademarks of jack wolf knives and it literally makes these so slicey they're like twelve thousandths behind the edge and that's what you want in your EDC knife, right? Where I was always worried about how fidgety the knife was, I didn't really focus on how good it was as a knife. And um, that's where this stuff has really opened my eyes. Now I can just fidget with the fidget thing, right? Drop that in my fifth pocket, it's light, you know, relatively speaking, it's light, stays out of the way. And then when I wanna go like this, I can go like this. 
And then when I need to cut something, I can go like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's stupid, and a lot of you are probably like, yeah, duh. Um, but I'm sure some of you are like, oh, yeah, I never thought of it that way either. So there you go. Uh, but this knife is fantastic. Overall, it's just my favorite slip joint right now. Um, if you want to see a comparison to a couple, I only have three slip joints, I think, like models. So here's the sharpshooter jack from jack wolf knives let's center these there you go so you can see they are uh, not the same size the jack wolf sharpshooter jack is a little bit uh bigger then you have the tactile knife co bear and uh the reason i like the jack wolves better one reason you just saw there is i almost slipped off because there's not much to grab onto that's where that full flat uh, hollow grind comes in but this is a fantastic knife I rarely carry it anymore, though, um, since I got into the Jack Wolf knives. Uh, there's that. And then I have the Serge Panchenko Leaf, which is a really good tiny little fix uh, slip joint. Hard to see there. Let's switch these. Whoops. Switch these. Come on. Oh, now you want to lean that? I got Whatever. Who cares? Anyway, you can see it's tiny, right? Um, this one got me really bad, but it was because I was being an idiot and closed it while I was on the phone, like, not paying attention. Here's the Kaiser Mojave Original, if that is anything for you there. Uh, and I think that's enough size comparisons, right? Uh, let me put this away. Oh, just so snappy-dappy-doo. I love it. I love how they snap. Um, slip joints are just my jam now, guys. Put it this way, I think, is the way it goes in. Yep um so so good all right so i think that's pretty much everything i want to say i mean it's comfortable in hand fits really well i mean it just melts into my hand i think the sharpshooter is slightly more comfortable i never thought i'd say that but that gun stock is just wow it's so comfortable down here and then up here just a great combination but this is like fantastic it's a very minimal sway so you're good to go there um so cutting is everything is fantastic on the knife Walk and talk, aesthetics. I mean, look at it. Look at it. I love a warning. Love a swayback, um, especially one that's not too pronounced. The only negative I have on this knife is the tip is a little high. Uh, right there, I caught it right there, but I went in a little bit. So it's not terrible. Like you can see, I can run my finger across, and I'm fine. But as you sharpen, that will come up a little bit, and it will probably get worse. So just keep that in mind. Um, but if you're like me and you carry it in a slip, you really don't have much to worry about um, other than you want to be careful when you pull the knife out, right? So I had Troy make the slip specifically like this where a little bit of the tail end was sticking out. So that way you can just grab it by the scales and pull it out, right? Because normally, if you had like the flaps or something like that, you'd probably want to go in and grab it like this, right? But you're you might shove your finger right into that tip, like right there. I'm I'm on the tip. If I push down, I'd be stabbing myself. So instead of risking that, I just did it like this, so I can just grab them sideways, right? That's how I do it on the sharpshooter. So it's just natural to me. You could also try a slip that goes in like this. But uh, from what Troy was telling me, it's a lot harder to get it to work because of the sway back. Um, if you use a clip slip like this from Lancelot Leather, this is the Jack Wolf Knives OCD for EDC clip slip. You can put it in like this because it's got a little bit of a looser fit. It's made to fit multiple models. And you just put it in like that. And then you just pull it out like that and you're good to go. So um, you have options, of course. You can get those slips, by the way, either from OCD for EDC or unbranded from the EDC round table. Um, either way, um, this knife, utterly fantastic. Uh, I really, unless you just hate slip joints, there's no reason not to want to get this. Um, the carry is fantastic in these slips. It makes it feel super slim. It's super lightweight. They're like, I don't know, two and a half ounces. Uh, they disappear in your pocket. And when it's the only knife you're carrying, like it is for me, a lot of times these days, it, it just disappears. Um, and it's odd that the only knife I carry sometimes now is a slip joint, but that's it, just how I've evolved and I love it. <laughs> so there you go. 
That is the laid back Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. Now, next we have the Grimsmo Knives Rask. I've been getting a lot of questions about this knife because, and it's fair, because I did an unboxing and then I did a video saying we need to talk about the Rask because I'd had two of them at that point and um, I just had issues, so to speak, where I would have to lube it like every day or it would stop dropping shut right and it's just a break-in period that's what i found i bought both of them secondary so i didn't assume that it needed break-in you know what i mean i just thought it should be good to go well it turns out not many people carry and use these okay so if you buy one of these on the secondary just know that it might need to break in because the guy before you might have just bought it because it's a rask and then left it in a knife case or in the box, you know, or in a safe because a lot of people just aren't like me or you, maybe, where you'll carry and use expensive knives. I have no problem carrying and using this. Um, that gives the knife character, and that's what the knife is for, in my opinion. Everybody has their way. Um, I'm not right. You're not right. Doesn't matter. I'm just telling you my way. I like to carry and use expensive stuff because otherwise there's no point in me personally owning it, right? Um, so that happened, and people have been kind of wanting me to do a follow-up. So this is it. Um, long story short, this knife is utterly fantastic. It is the best of the flipper-only knives on the market. Um, I would compare it to something like the Holt Bladework Spectre or Haptic or Morpheus. I would compare it to something like the uh, Craig Brown Cortex, which I will argue at some point I did say that was better uh, because you could flick it. I changed my mind. I pull back that statement. This one is better in my opinion. Um, you can compare it to any of the flipper only knives that you're thinking of, right? Um, I would not compare it to like an Oz Machine Company Roosevelt. I would not compare it to something like a Koenig Arius. Now, me personally, I would take the Rask over the Arius any day of the week. Um, but that's mostly because I'm left-handed and this uh, carries better. It uh, deploys better, in my opinion. It functions better left-handed. And um, to me, honestly, it's a better cutter. So um, that's, you know, really here nor there. But um, if you take a look at the Rask, it's beautiful. This one has a starburst pattern. Like I said, I had two. I did sell one. I just didn't need two Rasks, two Rosies. It's just a lot of money tied up in knives. And then I can't pick which one to carry, and then I don't carry it at all. So it kind of seems silly, right? Um, so I've been selling the uh, knives I have two of um, in most cases. So it is dead centered. It's made by the Grimsmos in Canada. This one has the blue starburst. Um, one thing I don't like is that the pivot and the body screws don't match. I don't know why they do it that way. I feel like this might be steel and those are titanium, but... Why couldn't you do this out of titanium? I don't know what the deal is there. Let's see. Is it steel? Could just be the barrel too. So I'm just... Might be. See, that's tie. So I don't know. There is a lock bar insert here. Um, I did mention there was lock stick or grab when I first got it. That's completely gone. Again, just seems like break-in stuff. Um, I've had people argue or say in my comments that you shouldn't have to break in a $900, $1,000 knife. That's fair enough to say, but it's a knife, you know, uh, it's a mechanical thing. Um, a lot of times those need to break in. And I would argue that once broken in, this is one of the best knives on the market. So I have no issue with it <laughs> at all. Uh, the ergonomics are utterly fantastic. It's a thin knife, and that's what I love about it. But it doesn't feel that thin in your hand because it's got a little bit of height to it. It's not super short. So it feels good in this grip. And then the way they did the blade, you can choke up, and it's essentially a flipper choil, and I love it. This is my favorite position to be in on this knife. And then it has a nice, sharp RWL 34 blade, uh, a lot of people are going to poo-poo the steel, I know. 
it's basically 154 cm or whatever and people have that on customs all the time and this is essentially that it's a production custom like i talk about with oz cortex whatever sorry uh craig brown the list goes on um this feels so good in the hand and when you're doing your daily tasks which for me cutting open a package right cutting through a letter um cutting out shipping labels this actually does pretty well with that i just kind of get down like this and then utilize that tip not the best but if it's in the pocket it does fine at it right and i can always grab you know another knife if i really want to if i'm at home i have a million choices right uh, but it works really well for that um, it doesn't penetrate you know a ton of pages like something like a sheep's foot or a warning would but it'll get the job done right um the stock is relatively thin and i just think it has a great grind i think they did a great job on the blade um but i'm not the uber user here like i'm not the guy i'm not cutting a horse with this thing so just keep that in mind um the action on this knife is phenomenal it might be the best action on a knife um the way they've dialed this detent you can see this flipper tab has a little bit of jimping on it and at first you're like man it just looks so plain and could that be good and the answer is they dialed the detent to where it just fires like there's no there's no questioning is it light or is it too strong it's just perfect like unlike the whole haptic it doesn't have a pokey flipper tab so having enough detent it doesn't feel too strong like the 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 haptic got it started to hurt after a while right this doesn't do that um and that's what i love about it and then closing it is like a dream you know you just get your finger out of the way and that thing comes down or you can stop it with the flipper and then get out of the way but you better get that thumb out of the way now you can tighten it down um if you don't want a guillotine you can get it to not guillotine that's fine um there's no play there's no rock and it does that it's the part it's the party trick on this knife it's so good without really doing anything crazy now it does have a nub system there's a sort of little rod here that acts as your detent um detent ball and then you have a nub which is how it kind of just glides shut there's no like there's no breaking the detent. It's just as soon as you're off the lock bar, you're freaking off. There's no, um, I don't know how to explain it, but I wish I could show you internally. I've done a disassembly so you can kind of see in there, but there's like the little rod uh, detent ball thing. And then right up there, that is the nub. So it's kind of like a haptic or a um, sharp by design uh nub design just their way of doing it um and that's what i think it's all about is you you like a design like that uh make it your own you know what i mean and they did that so yeah that's the rask i love it it's one of my favorite knives it's clearly my favorite of the flipper only knives um it just does a lot of things i love really well also the clip, this thing carries like an utter dream. Uh, it goes in your pocket, out of your pocket so easily, yet it doesn't feel loose in any way. It's the perfect tension. It's the perfect thinness, the perfect weight. They, they just killed it on this knife. The only thing that could make the Rask better is if they made a whole version, but it would be a different knife in that point and it would have to be left-handed. So, you know, it just works really well for me um and it's just one of the best knives you can get so um plain and simple there for you the milling is excellent in there the craftsmanship is excellent and you know what there's so many of them on the market now you can get these for uh under table at this point i see them go for in the 800 sometimes 900 um uh, you know the going rate usually when you win a, a, a spot is 975 i think so you know expect to pay around that look at the tolerance you know uh it just is beautiful there's no gapping at all um the relief cuts inside the centering's perfect but it has just enough tip 
you know it's just enough to not get you uh, it's just a beautiful beautiful knife beautiful piece and um i love it so that's the rask that's the follow-up the final take so to speak shout out to the trash man um if you guys wanted to know what i thought it's baller go get one so i love you guys i hope you have an absolutely fantastic day would love to hear your thoughts in the comments and uh i will catch you later